Thank you for joining today. I have a special message I want to share with you, and it's pretty intense, and I'm hoping that you'll be happy at the end, (laughs) because it's a message that God so gently hammered into my head just to make me wake up, stop making these stupid decisions that I was making, and choose to be in God's will. And I'm praying the same thing for you, that it's going to wake you up to go, okay, enough is enough. I choose to do what God wants. (laughs) Well, years ago, I was going to a marriage counselor. And the marriage counselor was trying to teach me to be more independent and don't be so needy and dependent on people because you need to learn to fight your fears. And he made this statement that I've never forgotten and I use it in so many areas of my life now. And he said these words, fight fear with a plan. He said, Terry, just imagine that you have a problem getting lost. And I said, funny you should say that. I get lost quite often. He said, well, let's just imagine that You get in your car and you're afraid that you're going to get lost, so you fight that fear with a plan. So before you even get in the car, you have a map of where you're going, you have your cell phone, you have the phone number to the place you're trying to get to. He said you fight fear with a plan. Well, then he was trying to walk me through this example. He said, you know, so you're going to New Orleans this weekend, right? And I said, yes. He said, let's just imagine that a nice gentleman comes up to you and he says, you going to New Orleans? And you say, yes. And he says, I am too. Can I carry your bags for you? And what would you say, Terry? And I said, well, I would say, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. The counselor goes, no, you would tell him, no, thank you. I can carry them myself. And I said, well, you don't know how heavy my bags are. But he said, no, you got to get this, Terry. You've got to fight fear with a plan. Start being independent. You can get through things on your own. Well, I have remembered that from years ago because to this day, those are words that ring in my head all the time is fight fear with a plan. And that's what I want you to learn today with no matter what it is that God's trying to get you to do in your life, whether it's losing weight, getting out of debt, um, sticking in a marriage, or maybe it's getting out of a relationship, or maybe it's some new thing that God's doing in your life and you're filled with fear, you fight that fear with a plan. But you know, fighting fear with a plan, being in the perfect will of God is going to require obedience. And making yourself obey God when your flesh doesn't want to, it hurts. I mean, your flesh is going to scream for the right to do what it wants to do. You look at Jesus in the garden. When he went through all that suffering to get to the cross, he crucified his flesh in the garden, which then led him to go into the cross. But he is just an example of what we have to do in our lives to be in the perfect will of God. There's a type of suffering that we have to go through. And the suffering I'm talking about is when your flesh isn't getting its way. When your emotions are lying to you, they're screaming, they're saying, you can't do this, you can't get through this, it's going to hurt too bad, that you choose to crucify your flesh just the way Jesus did. You know, I can remember back then, talking about when I was going through that and with the marriage counselor and all that, I was going through such a hard time in my life, and I had no idea that that God always promotes those, that warfare always surrounds those next in line for a promotion. I had no idea that that's why I was going through such a warfare in my life, because God was getting ready to do something new, and it could be the exact same thing in your life. And during that time, I was so miserable and in such pain in my heart. My heart was so broken, and I felt like the loneliest person in the world. Nobody could help me. Nobody could make my decisions for me. Nobody could just take this pain out of my heart. And I remember just driving into this cul-de-sac one night by myself, And seriously, just crying so hard, that hurtful, like deep kind of cry that comes from your gut where you're just going, God, I can't do this. I can't do what I know you're telling me to do. It hurts so bad. And I just remember just, it scared me almost because I'm not the type that cries a lot and I'd never experienced such heartbreak and pain in all my life. And I'm in that cul-de-sac just crying at night. And I just keep going, God, help me. God, please help me. Please give me strength. Please show me what to do. Please take these tears. Please heal my heart. Please restore my soul. And I'm just crying and crying and crying. And as I begin to just cry out to God, 
You know, there's a verse that says, the righteous cry out and the Lord hears them and he delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, which that's exactly what I was. Then the verse says, and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. When you cry out to God, I'm telling you, He comes right there to pick you up, to fill you with His strength right there in your weakest moment. God will fill you with such strength that you can't even comprehend it. And it's not an overnight thing. It's not like suddenly, all of a sudden, I was fine, the pain was gone. No, but it was seeking God continually, crying out to Him, and then using my mouth to prophesy my future. You know, I've heard so many preachers say, You need to go to the Word of God, find some scriptures, write them down, and start speaking them out of your mouth. Well, I wanted to help you by giving you some of the scriptures that I've used and that I still use to this day to speak out of my mouth, to start declaring my victory. I want you to just go online, download those those scriptures, write them down, carry them around with you. And every time your mind is tormented with, I can't do this. I can't do what I know God's telling me to do. You start speaking these scriptures out of your mouth. Because I'm telling you, you're prophesying your future. Your words, they carry life or they carry death. And you begin speaking God's word out of your mouth. And it'll give you that strength that you need to do what you know God's telling you to do. You know, you have to make a decision that you're not going to hell for anybody. That you have to answer for your life and your life only. You know, the decisions that you're making today, it's all leading you into your destiny, into your future. And make that decision that you are not going to hell for anybody. That you are choosing God's will over your will. Start confessing that, Lord, conform my will to your will. And I want you to know that obedience always has rewards. When you obey God, He will reward you. I love what Joyce Meyer said. She said, God wants to see you defeat this thing once and for all so that he can move you into greater things. And I love how she says that getting free is hard, but staying in bondage is much harder. So choose to obey God. Choose to allow his strength to come on you to do what you could never do on your own. So that next year at this time, you're not where you are today. And that's going to take obedience. So I want to encourage you to get this message on breaking the cycle I share so much more in that message on steps you can take, practical steps to help you obey God. And also, I want to just tell you thank you so much for supporting this ministry. Partners, thank you. It means the world to me because you're helping me teach others what God has taught me. And I just want to say thank you. 